Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here Saturday now, the 7th day of September 2024. Hope your weekend is going okay. we got to talk about this. This could be a problem. Hurricane season definitely not over. We talked about recently that the East Atlantic, those tropical waves, all that, probably not going to be where we're looking. That part of the seasonal forecast package screwed up. And so we need to focus on the western part of the basin. And true to form, here we are looking at Invest Area 91L. And yes, this could end up being a problem for our friends along the northwest Gulf Coast. So let's dig right in and show you what we got. First, it is active out there. It's not like we have nothing. Looking at the seven-day outlook, we have three areas, all three colors, the low, the medium, and the high. But this one right here, Invest Area 91L, that's the one we have to watch the closest. It's got part of Invest 90 up in here. And then that tropical wave that was coming across that gave us all that anxiety last week, thinking that maybe something would brew up real big and get into the Gulf somewhere. Hey, it looks like it still might, but in a different path than what we were seeing several days ago. I'll explain as we move forward. This system, 40% chance of further development. We don't want to ignore it, but it is inconsequential right now, especially since we've got Invest Area 91. So let's focus on that, shall we? The broad picture, let's take a look at everything. Here's what's left over from 90L. This is 91L down here. That tropical wave that came off and all those models were just going crazy with it from time to time. Well, it has made its way over into the Bay of Campeche area, parts of southern Mexico. That energy should start to come north. This energy, we've got a front that has come through. From old 90L will come down. The two will sort of converge in here. And thus, we could have some problems down the road with a bona fide tropical system with wind and storm surge problems that is possible. So that's what we're going to look at for the most part as we go forward through the rest of today's update. Meanwhile, we have a disturbance here. Another one out here. Again, both of these. Plenty of time to watch them as needed. No problems there. Also, look at this right here. That is a frontal low. There's your cold front. It's attached to the front. But it was pretty interesting looking. Let me pull up the radar scope here. There it is. There it goes. Let me go back to the animation. Uh, it was really interesting earlier today. It definitely was curled up sitting down here off of my coastline. I'm up here in Wilmington. But that's what a frontal low pressure area looks like getting swept on out with this fall like. It is meteorological fall, by the way, even though it's not on the calendar or astronomical. But we do have colder air that is draining in. And that's going to produce the possibility of some water spouts, by the way, over parts of the Great Lakes. But that front will help to drive this energy south. And like I said, it's going to meet up with that bona fide tropical wave that originated off of Africa. And that's the ingredients that could lead to something uh, problematic down the road a piece. Here's what it all looks like zoomed in. Some pretty impressive thunderstorms there clearly getting sheared uh, with the upper level winds very strong across this region. Down here, though, there's the energy. You can clearly see some rotation right there. It looks like a low pressure area perhaps right there. And if we look at the vorticity signature, absolutely. We can see that very clearly. There it is right there. There's the other energy up in the northwest gulf. And that is the ingredients. That's what we can look at now and track and see when does this come together and how does that process work. Most of the computer models are picking up on it. Let's go back to the Hurricane Center homepage. I do want to mention we are up to high probability now, 70% chance that this uh, becomes a tropical depression. In fact, they say it's likely to form in the early or middle part of next week as it moves generally northward near or along the Mexican coast and the Texas coastline. So we're going to have to watch this very, very closely. Again, there's the energy sources there. The water temperatures above average all through this region in here, with the exception of the extreme northern Gulf Coast up here around Louisiana and parts of eastern Texas, say off of High Island and vicinity, closer to normal. But even that normal, you know, don't let these blues fool you. That is still 28, 29 Celsius easily. So we're talking 81, 82, maybe even warmer than that. And the very warm water, both anomalously warm where it's above average and the reality, 30, 31 Celsius. In fact, there's your 30 degree Celsius isotherm. We've been so used to seeing the temperatures in the Gulf so far above normal that 
even the 30 Celsius line kind of getting pulled south gives the deception that all this blue up here, oh, that must be colder and below normal. No, it is not. It is still very warm right up against the shelf areas of Louisiana. Again, that's about 29 Celsius right there. You know, you're still talking low to mid 80s overall. So plenty of fuel available. So how do the models react? This is the GFS operational from the morning run. That would be the 12Z run. Uh, again, there's the energy that was once 90L. And it did pick up that little piece of vorticity, that little frontal low, by the way. Kind of cool that the model can sense all of that. There's some tropical wave energy too, by the way. But there is the main source of heat and energy, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's what we really have to watch. That this comes in, this adds to it, and you'll see all heck starts to break loose. And it really does. It's kind of, I don't want to say concerning, but we're starting to get there. That we could have more than just a rain event. So let's move this out into time. Watch how that vorticity, it's a big mess, out to about 36 hours or so. Then the GFS starts to focus that energy there in the southwest bay of Campeche. And then by day two, fully 40, 48 hours out. Still broad, but certainly focusing better. And as we move on out to 60 hours and then 72 hours, close to the Mexican coast. But again, let me remind you, that's going to be very close to... Uh, this very warm water sitting in here, 30, 31 Celsius, lots of warm water for that to tap into, and that is a concern. Keep moving it forward to 84 hours and beyond. The trough starts to erode the ridge enough that this perhaps goes more northeast, paralleling the coast there with an eventual landfall in southwest Louisiana, uh, maybe sometime early Thursday morning. That is the possibility. We've got to wait and see, though, Going from where we are right here to this, that's a big step. That's a lot of processes involved, and there's a lot of changes that can happen that can affect the outcome. So let's bring me back on because I want to talk to you, not just at you. When we see something like this, this is your signal to say, all right, I live out here in this area. I know that even a Category 1 hurricane can give me some big storm surge numbers in the vulnerable areas of southwest Louisiana. Luckily, it looks like it will be a fairly small and compact system, but those can ramp up really quickly. That's the danger here. That coupled with all of this dismissiveness going into, oh, the hurricane forecasters didn't know what they were talking about. You can still get some pretty nasty events, even when the overall seasonal forecast package, as I said earlier, didn't necessarily work out. Of course, there's still plenty of time on the clock. We'll see how all that works out. Let's revisit that on November 30th. But again, to my point, we do have to watch areas close to home, where we live, our friends in Mexico, people in the Northwest Gulf. So keep this you know, somewhere in the middle of your mind. Don't worry about it just yet, but please pay attention to it going forward, which I'm sure you will. It's hurricane season, right? What does the Euro show? Let's refresh this. We should be out to, all right, we're fully out to five days. That's good. So the Euro, very similar. There's your energy with old 90L there. There's the energy with now what is 91L, and this is every 24 hours off the tidbit site here. So there's uh, Sunday morning, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning. A bona fide, significant system there coming up and making landfall somewhere near the Texas-Louisiana border. That is not good news because this is early on. And these are the things that I know to look for. This is not fear mongering or trying to, I don't even, I hate having to say it, but I know enough. Just think about Umberto, how quickly it intensified back in 2007. And we have seen other systems that rapidly strengthen there in the Western Gulf. If the upper levels and the humidity and all those other parameters are there, we know we've got the seedlings. We know we've got the warm water. Those two ingredients are definitely going to be in place. The other parameters, will the atmosphere cooperate, the outflow, shear, dry air, all that, we have to wait. Unfortunately, we've got to wait and see when we get a consolidated center somewhere, and then how do the models react, especially, these are your global models here, especially the hurricane-specific models, which I'm not going to get into right now because I just designated this as 91L. I want to wait another model cycle or two, so when we do tomorrow's update, we'll look at those models like the HWARF, and the HMON and the HAFS, people call it the HAFS model, all kinds of stuff to look at. But this is the 
the signal to me that we really need to be paying attention to this as it makes that turn and any more time over that warm water and certainly this could be even more problematic going forward so hopefully this has everybody's attention as well it should all right tonight 8 p.m 20 years in the making all the way back to 2004 when we began the hurricane landfall project proud to announce that fox weather will have a special featuring yours truly and some other colleagues as well i haven't seen it yet so it'll be a a neat treat for me and my family as well but it's tonight at 8 p.m on fox weather wherever you can watch it the app you can get the fox weather app it'll be on youtube uh, samsung tv plus i know plus many of other sources you go to foxweather.com to find out more about that proud and very honored that they did a special about the 20 years of those guys those remote cameras that we've been putting out it's called eyes in the storm our virtual storm chasers put those out where we have no business being the story of how that all came to be tonight on fox weather 8 p.m entry interest time <laughs> i almost had a really solid update 8 p.m eastern time and yes i do hope it'll be interesting as well in the meantime and of course even after the special is over we do need to be watching that western and northwestern gulf because again this could be a problem and we need to make sure we are prepared for it and as such i'll certainly be doing updates over the next several days and if need be we'll be out there doing what the fox weather special is going to be all about and that would be putting equipment in harm's way where we can't be Anyway, have a good rest of your Saturday. As always, thanks for tuning in. From all of us at Hurricane Track, I'm Mark Suttoth. Tune into the show tonight, and I'll see you again tomorrow.